Okay. Okay. Now, uh, what are the questions you have? Have you marked on those ones? So do I need to go through with each one? Okay, let's do like this. I'll uh, explain you. 13B. 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 Start. So Here? page, the 168. 168 page number. You can put it in the, type it in the. Okay, let me, 168, right? 168, okay. 168. 13B. 13B, okay. 168. Up. 13B. Up. Mm -hmm. Okay, this one. A parabolic mirror was used to ignite the Olympic torch for the uh, 2010 Winter Olympics in Vancouver and uh, Whistler. British Columbia, suppose its diameter is 60 centimeters and its depth is 30, centi 30 centimeters. Okay, they have given us the curve now. Determine the quadratic function that represents its, its cross sectional shape of the lowest point in. The center of the mirror is considered to be the origin as shown. So, what's the question there? We have, um, so we have, we have to identify the quadratic equation, right? Quadratic function. Yeah. So, how do we gonna find out the quadratic function? Let me open a paint. open up a paint first or oh, my machine has been stuck okay so here then if it's a quadratic equation then the equation would be what so anyway, uh, anyway, the equation structure would be y is equals to ax squared plus bx plus c, right? Then what are the points we have? So we have the minimum point that is 0, 0. Okay. Yeah. So we can substitute that 0, 0 point here and find out the value for c okay so then what would if we substitute 0 0 point here then uh, so the y value would be 0 0 is equals to here a times 0 square plus b times 0 plus c which means the value c also is equals to 0 C means mm. 0. Then the equation would be y is equals to ax squared plus bx type, type and equation. Okay, now tell me yeah. what are the things, um, what, are, what are the points we have? Other points? So they have given yes, 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 yes. 30, uh, 30, 30, right? Then one point would be plus 30, plus 30. The other point would be minus 30, plus 30. Is it clear? Yeah. Now, if the y value is 30, 30 is equals to A. X is 30 means 30 squared plus B, 30. And then if I consider the second one and then write 
Then they have 30 is equals to A times minus 30 squared plus B times minus 30. Okay, now what do we have? Here we have the first one. Here we have the second one. Then the first one is, I can simplify further no first one. If I divide this entire equation by 30, I have 1 is equals to 30A plus B. Then for the second equation, I have 1 is equals to 30A minus B. Is it clear? Yeah. Ah, now, to cut this B, to eliminate this B, what I do, I just add these two. 1 plus 2. 1 plus 2 means 1 plus 1, left hand side is equals to 60A. B will cut off. 2 is equals to 60A. A is equals to 2 over 60. 2 over 60. Which means the value A is 1 over 30. Okay. Now what about the now what about the B? B is so what we can do we can so this one to find out B so this one is the first one this one is the second one we can subtract the second one from first one you know one minus two then we can eliminate this 38. The got a left hand side would be 1 minus 1 is equals to 30A plus B minus 30A thirty A uh, plus B. Okay, 1 minus 1, that is 0. 30A minus 30A, again 0. Here we have 2B. B is equals to 0. Then what is the final equation we have? Y is equals to A is 1 over 30 x squared which means if i multiply both sides by 30 the final answer would be 30 y is equals to x squared is it clear yes okay now what they're saying how would the how would the quadratic function be different of the outer edge of the mirror were considered the origin. Explain why explain why there is a difference. I understand what you're saying. Sorry? I understand what you're saying. Yes. So how would the quadratic function be different if the outer edge of the mirror were considered the origin, then explain why there is a difference here. That is true. It's clear, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the other question? Hmm? The other question? What are the questions? What else you have? Well, for 13B, I understand which is the edge. Ah, uh, thirteen B. What's the edge? What's the edge means? If the outer edge of the mirror were considered the origin, outer edge of the mirror were considered the origin, 
explain why there is a difference. How would the quadratic function be different if the outer edge? Outer edge means what? Outer edge of the ER mirror was considered the origin. Uh, determine quadratic function that represents its um, outer edge means what? Does it mean like 30, 30? 30, 30, the oh. corner, right? These ones. I mean, yeah. this point and the, this point. Let me check that one whether I also think like that, but need to check. Give me one minute. Okay, while I'm checking, uh, the other question, what what else you have? While I'm checking, tell me the other questions. The sixteenth C. Sixteenth C. Oh, I didn't do like the exercise, like the six, the thirteen point two and three part. Why? Sixteen. Yeah. This one is sixteen. This is this the question you have? Sixteen C. Sixteen C. Okay. Okay. The for the previous question, yes, y is equals to one over thirty x squared is the equation. If the outer edge of the mirror, that is when x is equal to 30 centimeters, is, uh, is considered the origin, the equation would shifted accordingly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what. So the outer edge would be third when x is equal to 30. Then it how it works? Easier. Then how it works? So what will happen yeah. there? For this one. Which is the edge? Is it minus 30, 30 or 32? So we can consider both. So if it's x is equal to 30, then because there are two edges now. So they haven't mentioned it uh, properly. How would the quadratic function be different if the outer edge of the mirror were considered the origin now? Then we can consider it as when x is equal to 30, we'll get the positive um, edge. Okay, this one. Then how it works? If x is equal to 30 centimeters is the uh, considered the origin, then the equation would uh, shifted accordingly. How it shifted? Uh, 1 over 30 minus 30. Yes, y is equal to 1. So anyway... The general equation would be y is equals to a times x minus um, x minus h squared. Okay, h minus x squared plus k. No, that is for the uh, vertex form. No. Yeah. Then this one was for the vertex form. Then what will happen? So h is zero. Okay, because the new origin, new origin now is at x is equal to 30. And then, uh, because of that, x would be 30 and k would be equal to 0. Why k is equal to 0? Because the mirror depth starts from 0 at the edge. Then, here it starts the 0 edge. You know, k would be 0 and also x is equal to 30 and h is equal to 0. That's how it works. Anyway, the answer they will, the answer they uh, will expect is, answer they will expect is actually, uh, it will be shifted. Okay, the answer would be, uh, the graph will, the graph will be shifted according. Or else you can explain these values as well. 
h is equal to 0, x is equal to 30, and k is equal to 0. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. That's how it works. That is enough for you guys. Yeah. Then for the 16th one, what's the question there you have? The main section of the suspension, suspension bridge in park, the La Gorge. What the name of? has cables in the shape of a parabola. Suppose that the points on the tops, suppose, suppose that the uh, points on the uh, tops of the towers where the cables are attached are 168 meters apart and 24 meters vertically above the minimum height of the cables. Did you draw? Did, I didn't check for the answers. Did you draw what they are saying? Uh, yeah, I think. How it, how it looks? Uh, it's the not from origin. Okay, so they have already given the main section of the suspension bridge in uh, this square has cables in the uh, shape of a parabola. Okay, these are the cables. Um, then suppose that the points on the top Suppose that the points on the top of the towers, these are the points, no? Then uh, towers where the cables are attached to 168 meters apart. If you go to the distance would be 160 meters apart uh, and 24 meters vertically above the minimum height. So if this one is the minimum, if this one is the minimum height, then uh, 24 meters would be the vertically height. Okay, apart and 24 meters vertically above the minimum height of the cable. Ah, now, determine the quadratic function in the vertex form that represents the shape of the cable. Ah, now, what, I, what, what it says. So, here if I draw like this. Now, So here we have the minimum point, okay? So the distance would be 168. 168, uh, the distance in between these two, right? Yeah, 168. Oh, yes, 168. Hundred and sixty-eight. Now, what else we have? Uh, the apart and the uh, 24 meters vertically above the minimum height of the cables. Now, uh, this height would be what? 24, right? Okay. Then, uh, what they are saying? The main uh, section of the suspension bridge. I have a question. Oh, yes. Then determine the quadratic. Uh, what? Yeah. What did you have? For the, the 13. B, so you said shifted to 30, 30, right? Yeah, yes. So I just put the like the number change and then put that. The, okay. Like if it's 30, 30, then it's like 1 over 30, x minus 30 uh -huh. square plus 30. Yeah, yeah. So that's the answer. Uh, yes, let me, uh, I'll, I'll check, uh, you can send, you send me the entire working, so I'll work on those ones and uh, mark it and send back to you, otherwise it will take some time, no? I couldn't have enough time to uh, check on one by one, shall I mark it um, tomorrow and send back to you, is it okay? Okay, okay. yeah. Okay, so I'll mark all the questions and send back to you. So I'm just uh, explaining this one. So I think for this one, now it would be 168 would be the difference in between these two. And here the gap would be 24, right? Yeah. Uh, yes. This is how it works. Then uh, part 24 uh, meters vertically above the minimum height of the cables. No? Determine the quadratic uh, function in vertex form that represents the shape of the cable. Uh, cable. How... How did you how did you get that um, what we call the equation? 
So the maximum is point is 84, 24. Like. Maximum point is okay. So which means then the minimum point, minimum point lies in zero, zero. the axis. Yeah, zero, zero. Yeah, that's how it works. Okay, then, yeah. okay, then, then the maximum point would be, yes, uh, which means 64, 24, 64, 24. Here you have minus 64, 24. Is it clear? Yeah. Then you can uh, apply to that equation and you can uh, find out the uh, equation, right? I mean, the um, what do you what we call uh, the equation from the vertex form? Because here anyway, uh, so y is equals to a x squared. If it's if they have asked us to uh, find out it with the vertex form, eh, na? x minus h squared plus K would be the equation. Then the vertex would be then the vertex would be zero zero. What will happen here is then always vertex would be zero zero. Let me check that one as well because if I consider that one as origin, origin is the turning point. So let me check. Let me check how it works. So the new one is yeah. What they have already done is they have placed the origin at the minimum point of the cable, which is the vertex of the parabola. Then, then the equation we have is y is equals to a times x minus h squared plus k. No? So the vertex equation for the vertex is 0, 0. I mean the coordinates, which means the value of h is equals to 0. The value of k is again equals to 0. So then the equation will be narrowed down to y is equals to ax squared y is equals to ax squared. Now what you can do is, you can substitute that value. 64, uh, what did you, uh, uh, 84, 84 and 24, right? 84 and 24. You can substitute that value uh, for this given equation. y is equals to 24 when x is equals to 84, no? It's got a times 84 squared. And then you can find out the value for A. The A value would be, if you uh, check for this one, 194. 294, I think. 294 or something. You just divide this 24 by square of 84. Then what we can do, we can rewrite this equation as how y is equals to, y is equals to, now the value A is 1 over 296 into x squared. Is it clear? Yeah. So that's the first part. That is the first part. Then the second one would be choose two other locations. Choose two other locations for the origin. We have to choose um, arbitrary two locations. Choose yeah. two other locations for the origin. Write the corresponding equa quadratic equation. You can choose any number. Like huh? one, one. You can choose yeah, any number. Yeah, it can like be one. one, one. Yeah, it can be one, one. It can be one, one. But according to the given context, it would be ideal if we can consider that um, the highest points 
As for the previous question, they were considered that one. You can eighty four, twenty four as the uh, vertex. Is it clear? So if we can consider the one of these points, now it would be uh, it would be better. Okay. Then how the how the graph change? How the graph will change? How the graph will change? What do you think? Then the graph would be y is if I consider this 84, uh, 24 as the vertex or the turning point, then the graph would be y is equals to 1 over 294 x plus 84 squared plus 24. Is it clear? Yeah. That's the value. Now, use each quadratic function to determine the vertical height of the cables above the minimum at the point that is 35 meters horizontally from one of the towers. Are your answer the same using each of your functions? Are then we need to calculate it when x is equal to 35 for the part C. So here, the given equation was y is equal to 1 over 294 x squared. As they have given now, the value x would be 35. Okay. Then, Value y is value y is 100, uh, 1 over 294 into 35 squared. The final answer would be 4. Point, if you simplify, if you uh, solve for y, y is equals to 4.17 meters. Okay, 4.17 meters. Now, now what they have? So, uh, use each quadratic function to determine the vertical height of the cables above the minimum at a point that is 35 meters horizontally yeah. uh, from one of the towers. Uh, one of the towers. Are your answers the same? Then we need to calculate Again, consider when x is equals to 35 minus 84 as well. 35 minus 84 means there we have minus 49. Okay, then again, we need to can consider for that one y is equals to 1 over 294 times now what will happen minus why are you uh, 35 35 35 they have given now um the vertical height of the cables above the minimum is at point that is 35 meters horizontally they have given now. that's why i just considered that uh, 35 so what is the question like asking i understand 35 meter horizontally above the minimum point. Um, uh, the results vary based on the origin placement because the parabola's symmetry and the reference point changes. However, the actual vertical distance between the cables and the lowest point of the parabola remains the same when correctly interpreting the different equations. How are we gonna say that one? The value y. So the vertical height would be about 4.17. Vertical height would be 4.17. From the previous equation, we can receive that one. And uh, minimum uh, 4.17 uh, meters above the minimum height at 35 meters horizontally from one of the towers. 
when considering the origin at the minimum point. Okay, when considering the point at the minimum point. Okay, so if we consider this one as this one, then minus 48 uh, means the value x. Now, for this equation, we need to consider minus 49. Then minus 49 plus 84 squared plus 24. That is the equation for this one. If you check for this one, again, you would receive as you would receive the y value as uh, 417, 4.17 plus 28, 28.1. There you have y is equals to, uh, there you have what? 28, 28.17 uh, or something. 28.17 or something. Then that means, so the vertical height would be about 4.17 meters above the minimum height and 35 meters horizontally from one of the towers when considering the origin. Okay, that's fine. So can, you can understand what would be the context, right? I mean, uh, I don't think that uh, you will given these kind of very hard questions. So the thing is actually we can't uh, like... We know the concept, but we can't apply that concept into the, what we call the given scenario, right? So that's what, that's what uh, we are lacking. Anyway, let me do those questions and send to you. So it, it will. Uh, so, it's, so, uh, so it's asking like, uh, find the height of the new tower, and the new tower is 35 meters away from the top pole. Yes. So like, can you also. 28.17. 35 plus 84. Is that possible too? Uh, this one, 35 plus 84. Yeah. yeah. Or do you have too much? Okay. 35 plus uh, 84 means then you will get 111, 119, right? Yeah, I didn't do the question, but I was wondering why, why you subtract. Oh, okay. no. I, why I, why I uh, subtract that one? Okay, the, the reason for the subtraction is what we had earlier, what we had earlier for the vertex form, the equation. 1 over 290. So I had the equation like this now. I had the equation y is equals to actual equation was a was 101 over 294 and then x plus 84 squared plus 24. This was what we had with the vertex form. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yeah. Okay, now... The vertex form, yeah. Okay. Vertex form, it was the value, right? Then... Yes. Now what we have is... Now if the x value is 35... Okay, why I substitute? Why I subtract? The reason for the subtraction is, okay, the reason for the subtraction is what, why? Uh, now, as they, as they have, uh... yes, yes. Okay, okay. Use each quadratic functions to determine the vertical height of the cables above. Okay, now what will happen here, how it, how it drawn so if i draw this one how it works how it looks like uh, zero zero one yes this one would be zero zero and so here it will goes from zero zero and uh, the minimum height would be 
This height would be 24. This height would be uh, 84, right? That is how it works, no? That is how it works. Now what they're saying, use each quadratic function to determine the vertical height of the cables above the minimum, above the minimum at a point that is 35 meters horizontally from one of the towers. Ah, then one of the towers. So from this one, 84 to 184, uh, minus so somewhere around this, right? Then the value would be this distance x would be uh, 35. When x is equal yeah. to 35, this one is 35. So to get that value, then what I did was I just uh, subtracted. Oh. But, but uh, yeah, I just subtracted it. But it would be then... Uh, um, use each quadratic function to determine the vertex. Okay, at a point that is 35 meters horizontally. Ah, from one of the towers? From one of the towers itself. You know, this would be 35. See? So, this would be 35. Then to get this point, to get this length, it would be 84 minus 35. Uh, this has also tower 2. Yeah, tower 2 nang, what, what's happening here? Tower 2 nang, again, here it has minus 84. And from this one, the length would be here 35. Okay. What is the point here, which we have? That is minus 49. Why? Minus 84. Then again, we have to uh, come like another 34 for this uh, y-axis. So something now. Then the coordinate of this point would be coordinate of this point would be minus 49. So you subtract this, both sides or just one? So they have given from one of the towers. They have uh, considered it as uh, they have considered from the negative side. That's why it makes minus 49. Because they are saying uh, from one of the towers no. So you get same answer, no on which side? Yes, yes. Other side also, it, uh, you, you get uh, same answer. Why? The reason is you are squaring this one. No? You just squared this one. No? Then the uh, sign won't uh, effect to your answer. Because I don't know why you don't add. What's the difference between adding and subtract both? No, same. actually, it would be 84 minus 49. No, uh, so uh, you are telling why why I add this eighty four? Yeah, that's also thirty five meters away too. If you add. Ah yes yes. If I add also, ah yes 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 yes. So here, what's happening again? Thirty five, right? Yeah, yeah, that part it's I'm incorrect. I'm wrong actually. Then it would be what? It would be just, um, so again, uh, the x coordinate would be 84 minus 35, which means uh, 49. Minus 49, right? Yeah. Okay, so I'm correct. No? Minus 49 plus 84. Okay, I'll draw it again. So this one will lie like this, no? This entire length is 84. Now, what they are saying, from this tower itself, they are, they are um, like um, moving the minimum one to somewhere around 35 minutes. Again, they will, um, so now the curve would be, uh, the minimum value is in 35 now. Let's assume somewhere around here. Now the curve would be like this. Is it clear? So this length is 35. 
So here we have minus 84. Minus 84 plus 35 means this point. Now the vertex point is what? Vertex point uh, coordinates will be minus uh, 40. Again, the x would be minus 49, right? Oh. So you decide, so you subtract it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For well, the new graph, did you add 30 or 5 or? For the new graph, uh, I just add mm -hmm. 30. Yeah, I just add 35. Uh, 35 means, uh, so for the curve will be, it has been uh, shifted to left now. Shifted to left means what? The equation will be plus. Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. It's just one of the towers. Huh? Sorry? No. It said one, one of the towers shifted. One of the tower. Yeah, yeah, one of the tower is shifted, yes. It can be either right-hand side as well. Yeah, that's fine. It can be either right-hand side one as well. So if it's now, then it would be, uh, it has been shifted to uh, left now. Shifter to left means uh, what has happened to the equation then? If it's a uh, shifter to left now, it's then minus. The yeah, yeah, yes. That's how it works. Okay. Shall we move to how the? Did get... uh, Yes. How did you get the answer was like eight point one seven meet? Four point one seven. No, eight point one seven meter. This happened no matter which function is used. Oh, oh okay. So yeah, that is the height. That's the height. Yeah. How? Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> on the page 543. 543. Okay. You can type it. And, uh... <clears throat> ah, there, there we have the answers there. Oh, I see. You have found that one as well. I didn't see, you know. I just saw today. Yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. Then, then, okay. We'll do like this. So, uh, since we have the answers as well, I'll do the complete uh, exercise. I mean, the those statements once and send back to you. Otherwise, the time will be wasted, no? If you think uh, during the class. So, I'll move okay. forward with the next theory and I'll do those questions and send to you. Okay, is it okay? Okay. Then the lesson would be what? Where? 114 or something, right? We were in? No, no, not 1. We were in like 72. <coughs> 172. Okay, this one. Hmm. No, you did. Okay. We did these ones. Yeah. And what about the 3.3? Uh, 3.3, I think we have to do, right? Completing squares? No, we did that one as well. Oh, I see. Okay, that one also completed. Then we have the, ah, we have to start with the new chapter. Okay, now quadratic equation. <coughs> okay, so here we are going to talk about the quadratic equations again. Okay, so earlier also we were working on quadratic equations. Now here also we are working on a few quadratic equations. 
So now, pada teringiasis, I'll move to the theories uh, straightforward. So the 4.1, it would be graphical solutions on quadratic equations. So there you will be learning, describing the relationship between the roots of quadratic equation and the zeros of the corresponding quadratic functions and the x-intercepts of the graph of the quadratic function. Solving quadratic equations by graphing the corresponding quadratic equations. So here, when it comes to investigate the solving quadratic equations by graphs, the theory will be like this. First one is when it comes to quadratic equation, Quadratic equation is a second degree equation. Standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0 when a is not equal to 0. For an example, we can consider 2x squared plus 12x plus 16 is equal to 0. Is it clear? We already yeah. discussed. Now, if they ask us to calculate or find out the roots, roots means what? Answer. Roots means? Okay. Answer. Roots. roots means how we, uh, on a graph itself, do you have, you, I think you have already learned this one. From where we get these roots? From the equation. From the graph itself now? Uh, no. What will happen here is actually root means so roots means where so let's assume this is the curve killer curve or the function then where we have the roots roots means where it intersect the x-axis this one and this one are the two roots of this given equation so roots of an equation is the solutions to an equation zeros of a function then how we find out the how we find out the roots in algebraic format is we just equalize the function value which means fx value or the y value we equalize it to zero okay and then we just solve for x we just solve for this entire x the values of x for which fx is equal to 0. That's what we call roots. Is it clear? Oh, roots is when? Roots means? Y is you. Yeah, yeah. Roots means the x values, x values when y is equal to 0. Roots oh. means actually the x coordinates. x values for which when the function value, function of x or the y value is equal to 0. Is it clear? That's how we define. So if you check for this graph, so where we have these roots, these two are the roots. No? If you consider the coordinates, here we have minus 3, 0 and 2, 0. See, the y, would be, the y value would be 0 and we have two x values. So what are the two x values? One is minus three, the other one is two. Is it clear? Then the yeah. roots are then the roots are actually one root is minus three, the other root is two. Now what will happen? Related to the x intercepts of the graph of a function fx. So this one is so anyway, what you have to know is zeros of a function, then from where or how we are gonna find out this. Uh, roots the x coordinates roots are x coordinates when or where function value is equals to zero is it clear yeah if we wanted to find out it from the uh, graph itself then where the roots are how are we going to calculate the roots how are we going to find out the roots the solutions to a quadratic equations are called the roots of the equation. You can find the roots of a quadratic equation by determining the x-intercepts. 
roads are becoming when they intersect which one the x axis these are the two roots of this equation is it clear yes okay okay for example you can solve a quadratic equation 2x squared plus 2x minus 12 is equals to 0 by graphing the corresponding quadratic function. So here, if we draw this entire graph, the graph will look like this. The equation would be fx is equals to 2x squared plus 2x minus 12. Then the roots, we have two roots because this one is a this one is a quadratic equation. A quadratic equation means x squared. We should have two solutions, two roots. Then one, one solution would be when x is equals to minus 3. The other solution would be when x is equals to 2. Then the roots are, okay, roots are minus 3 and 2. Is it clear? When you consider yeah. the x value is minus 3, the y value or the function value is 0. Okay? Yes. Okay, now uh, the example one. Try to find out the roots of this one. First draw that graph and then try to find the uh, roots. First draw that graph, okay, and then try to find out the roots. So the equation here is minus x squared, which means this graph is concave up or concave down. Down. No. Yeah. First draw that graph. Blueberry. Blueberry ghetto. Okay, Ghana, Peace with that. Yeah, get over Nasani. Ah, 
What happened? Huh? Did you drop? So is the uh, root four zero or zero four? Yes. So what has happened there? How many roots are there? What do you think? One. Yes. Actually, there are two roots, but this uh, case is those two roots are equal. We can't say for an quadratic equation, we have only one root. There should be, if it's a quadratic equation, there should be two roots. Okay. But the uh, thing is, those two roots are equal. Four, four. Here the roots will be four, four. Okay. Is okay. it clear? Yeah. Okay. Give me one. Okay, so here, <coughs> only thing is, you have the, uh, what you call, if you draw this graph, then it will be, looks like this, okay, concave uh, down, uh, V-shaped one, here we have a maxima, so the roots are coming where it intersects the x-axis. Here, actually, it's not intersection. It touches the x-axis. So, we don't have two roots. We can't say that we don't have two roots. We have two roots, actually. But those two roots are equal. Equal roots are there. Then the root will be 4. Is it clear? When x is equal to 4, we are getting the roots. Okay? Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Then the method two. Okay, method two, you can draw it uh, with the spreadsheet. And also uh, method three, they have done it by using a graphing calculator online. They have given the equation and draw this graph. Then again, you will get this uh, uh, graph itself and you can find out the point where this graph touches x, x axis. That's how it works. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now, determine the roots of the quadratic equation, this one. Can you uh, find out the roots of this equation? x squared minus 6x six, six plus 9 is equals to 0. Quadratic what? equation, this one. x squared minus 6x plus 9 is equals to 0. We just wanted to find the roots of this equation. How are we going to find out the roots? Okay, find out the roots. First, draw that one. You have to use the graphing methods. No? First, draw that one and then find out the roots. Is it three? Yes, one is? Three, zero. Three, other, three, zero? No, three. Three, uh, the coordinate. The are, yeah, only the x-coordinate, right? Okay, three and the other one is? Three. Mm. Okay, now, what do you have here? That part is done. Then the second example is to quadratic equations with two distinct real roots. Um, now, what has happened? Here, 
we are going to find out the quadratic equations with two distinct prior rules. Okay, I'll give you, I'll tell you it in short. Let's assume we have an quadratic equation like ax squared plus bx plus c, <coughs> ax squared plus bx plus c. This one is the equation. Okay, now, okay, if I explain that one with this one, with this solution, they have drawn y is equals to minus x squared plus 15x plus 100. Hmm. Then this is the curve. What are the solutions they have? How many solutions uh, for this equation? Two. two solutions. What are those two solutions? One is this one. The other one is this one. When x is equal to 20. Okay. One is x is equal to 20. The other one will be uh, when x is equal to minus 5. <laughs> That's how it works, no? Yes. Now, what will happen here? By looking at the... Uh, equation by looking at an equation there should be a method we can identify whether this equation has two distinct root or not to identify yeah. that one we are um, calculating what a discriminant a discriminant means what delta x delta x means actually b squared minus 4ac okay can you remember b squared minus 4ac means here we have the b b squared minus 4 times 4 times ac we just calculate this value okay if after we calculate in this value we have three type of we have three types of situations one is this delta x is greater than zero the other one is when this delta x is equals to zero the last one is this delta x is less than zero okay if this delta x value which means b squared minus 4ac value is a positive one now then we have two real distinct roots is it clear yes distinct root ah now what will happen delta x is equals to zero means b squared minus 4ac is equals to zero ah then we have one real root that means 4-4. Four, four. The same root repeats. We have only equal roots. Okay. If this delta x is less than 0, which means negative, then that means we don't have we don't have real roots. Okay. That means we don't have real roots. Delta x is less than 0 means actually b squared minus 4ac value is less than 0. Is it clear how we determine yeah. whether an equation has a uh, whether an equation has real roots or not? And also if it has real roots, whether it whether it has two distinct real roots or not, you know? Is it clear? That's how yeah. we decide that one. Okay, now if I go to the note itself, okay, if I go to the note itself, so the first part we already done, no? method two, you can draw this one by using a spreadsheet and then the method three, you can do the same three same thing uh, by using a graphing calculator. Now what they are telling here is, ah, the okay so they haven't uh, mentioned that one so if it intersects actually if it if this curve intersects uh if this curve intersects the x-axis in two times okay in two different places then we can say that it has two distinct real roots okay if it's only touches the curve now 
if it's only touches the x axis now we can say only there's there we have equal roots equal real roots okay oh. if it's the third option would be the third option would be uh the equation that it doesn't have any real root that means this graph would be either this side or this side because it won't touch or it won't intersect the x axis these are the three uh, three cases that we are discussing during the entire lesson is it clear yes all right okay yes. so okay can you do one thing so can you do the okay we this part we already did no for the equal roots yes we already did can you do one thing can you do this uh, your turn question only this one try to okay. find out the real roots yeah
minus 10 and 10. Sorry? Minus 10 and 10. Okay. You got two real roots, right? Two distinct real roots. Okay, we'll be honest. I just made I just made not my data. Okay, so that part is clear now. Then yeah. no real roots. If it's no real roots, try to find out these ones. Three m squared minus m is equals to minus two. Have to graph it. Uh, okay, you can graph this one. What can I do the other? Huh? What can I do like different? Okay. Ah, discriminant. Okay, that one also, that's fine. If you find out, so to before you find out the discriminant, what you need to do is you need to like bring these one as, bring all these, bring the entire, uh, the function as ax squared plus bx plus c, okay? ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to 0. Again. So here it says 3m squared minus m is equals to minus 2. And then we have 3m squared minus m plus 2 is equals to 0. After that only you can substitute those values and get the final answer. Okay. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. So now try to find out this one. There's no real roots. Ah, uh, there's no real roots. Okay. Now it's clear, right? How do you uh, find yeah. these ones? Okay, the example flow, example four, solve a problem involving quadratic equation. Uh, they have given the quadratic equation as HD is equals to this one. So we need to find out the solutions. Okay, try to find out the solution. So there's no any uh, theories here. Uh, so only theory was uh, the previous one. How to how to conclude that whether it has two distinct real root or equal real roots or there's no any real root. That would be the only theory we have. So try to do this one as well. Okay, that's one. No, no, that's one. No need. That's one. No need. No need. Suppose the cable of the suspension bridge in example four is modeled by the function horizontal distance between two express your answer to the nearest. Okay, try this one. So there they have given the equation HD is equals to 0 0.0025 D minus 100 squared minus 12. So they ask us to find the roots actually. Mm -hmm.
what happened are you still doing uh, yeah i don't know how to you know how to do that part no, i don't know i'm still doing ah, okay you don't know okay okay so in which format in which format um we have this equation vertex vertex format no so as we already learned how do we find out the roots how do we found y out y is zero yeah i think you yeah, know so then y is equals to zero y is equals to zero means here hd the function value is hd you no know? hd should be equals to zero right then oh. Uh, I mean, then zero is equals to zero point zero zero two five. Okay, into d minus hundreds squared minus twelve. So first we need to take this twelve to the left hand side. Then we have twelve is equals to zero point zero zero two five. Times There's no the, roots. Ah, uh? no roots. Yeah, roots means the you got roots. No. So roots are the value for d, d values for d. Then that means so here we'll bring this twelve to the left hand side. Then we have twelve is equals to because here the twelve is minus. Then if we bring this. Uh, from right side to the left side, then we have positive twelve. Twelve is equals to zero point zero zero two five times d minus hundreds squared. Then d minus hundreds, d minus hundred squares will be equals to twelve divided by zero point zero zero two five, and then. What do you need to do? You need to take the square root of both sides and add hundred. Try to do. Is it clear? Yes. yes. Okay. You got the answer. Oh uh, yeah, I got hundred and fifty-two point nine. Okay. And the other one? The other one. What is the other 47. one? 47.1. 47. Okay. okay, okay. So here they have given a summary for this one. The summary would be if that function has no real roots, that means it don't, it doesn't intercept the x-axis. So if the graph doesn't intercept x-axis, that means there's no any real, real roots. Okay? There's no any real roots. If it touches the x-axis, that means it has only one real root. One real root or equal roots, equal real roots. If it touches the x-axis in two different places, that means it has two distinct real roots. Is it clear? Yeah. These are the only three situations which we uh, face. I mean, which we can find out. Okay. Okay. Then, then here you have uh, your understandings, practice questions. You can do those practice questions by yourself. Then we are moving to the factorizing quadratic equations. How are we going to do the factorization?
Okay. So how do yeah. we gonna factorize in these quadratic equations? So what do you think? Have you learned about the the minus b? Uh, which means so okay. If I directly go to the quadratic equation, the theory theory part would be so. For example, so quadratic equation would be a x squared plus b x plus c type I of an equation. Huh? Yeah, I can. I think I can do. Ah, uh, you know, right? Yeah. Okay, the factorization part you know. Okay. Ah, uh, shall we do like only these three ex uh, these three questions? Try to do those theories. You are doing these three examples, right? The A, B, yes. and C? Okay. Okay, is it clear? Oh, uh, yeah. Were you able to find out the first one? Yes. Okay. Then the second one, how are you going to find out? First, you need to multiply the entire equation by 4. 1, 4. 1 over 4. Okay. Okay. First, we need to multiply this entire equation by 4. And then... You have to find out the values, right? Yeah. Okay. It's clear, right? Yes. Now that part is done. Then you can do these your turn ones. Okay. And then. Okay. And then. And then. I should do the zero point four. Which one? The for the previous one. Which one are you asking? You should do try now. Is it? You said true, yeah. Okay. So this one. So oh, you said mm -hmm. do this. Okay. okay. So for this one now, for the example two, 
how we define these ones, how we find out the roots for these one. What are you going to do for the first one? Part A. So we are just considering, we are just substituting for this x plus 2 as t or something. A one special, I mean, uh, a variable. Then we can rearrange this entire equation as 12 t squared plus 24 t plus 9 is equal to 0. And then... What? How did it turn 12 t squared? T squared means I just uh, initiate or I just introduce another variable called T here instead of this X plus 2. Because if, if X plus 2 is there, then what we have to do is we need to remove these. I mean, we need to uh, expand these brackets and then need to find out the value. No? So here yes. also we have X plus 2 squared. Here also we have X plus 2. The easiest method is I just substitute t instead of this x plus 2. Then I can rewrite this entire equation as 12t squared plus 24t plus 9, which is equal to 0. Now, this one can be factorized easily, right? We can find out the value for t now. Is yes. it clear? Okay, then once we found out the values for t, so by using this equation, we can find out the values for x. Is it clear? Oh, otherwise, no. yeah, otherwise, what we need to do is we need to expand these entire brackets and then we need to solve. It's kind of, uh, uh, we have to spend some time on there and then only we can get the answer. But here, if we substitute value t instead of this x plus 2, then this entire equation will be narrowed down to this, uh, narrowed down to somewhat or easier, easier equation. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. That one is there. And what about this one? 9 times 2t plus 1 squared minus 4 times f minus 2 squared. What do you think what we need to do there? d plus 1 is a. s minus 2 is b. 2t plus 1 also a and uh, s minus 2 is t? No. No, because so here, okay, I'll show you. So we can't use the same same uh, letter or the same variable to do both of them. I mean, the both values. Oh. How are we going to find out then? How are we going to find out that? What do you think? Any other methods by looking at this one? Uh, you can say 2t plus 1 is the x and s minus 2 is y. Okay, okay. If not, if not, what you can do is see 9 times here we have 2t plus 1 squared minus 4 times s minus 2 squared, right? If they ask yeah. us to factorize, we just equalize this to 0 and then factorize. No, That's what normally we do, right? Yes. Okay. Then what, what I can do is I just bring this to the right side. Then there I have 9 times. 2t plus 1 squared is equals to 4 times s minus 2 squared. Is it clear? Yes. Okay. Now, what I can do? What do you think? I can easily take the square root of both sides. Yeah. So then from that, we can have two values. I mean, if I take the square root for this entire equation, one would be three times 
2t plus 1 is equals to plus o minus 2 times s minus 2. Is it clear? Plus o, I just yes. took the square root by considering plus or minus. Then we have two separate equations. One is for the plus. That is 3, 3 times 2t plus 1 is equals to 2 times s minus 2. The other one is 3 times 2t plus 1 is equals to minus 2 times s minus 2. Is it clear? Yeah. Ah, we have the first equation and we have the second equation. Now, what we need to do? We need to simplify these two equations and solve uh, simultaneously. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. That one is done. Okay, that's part they have done here. Okay, and then the factors would be like this. Okay, if you factorize the, this one anyway. How do you factor it first? Yeah, for the factorization, what we have done here is, so here we can uh, consider this 3 also, uh, 9 also 3 squared and 4 also 2 squared. No? Then it would be like in A squared minus B squared 4. A squared minus B squared for me. Then we have A minus B times A plus B. Is it clear? Yeah. So you can get that form uh, from this uh, equation. Okay. It's clear, right? Yes. Okay. Can you try to do this uh, A and B? A and B.
Okay. どうしよう。<笑><笑> Done? No. No. Then got
is the first one minus 2 n plus 4 n minus 4. How did you do? So minus 2 t squared. Is that the method you followed? Plus yeah. 12 t, 12 t, plus 14. Then it's yeah. easy. Then here we have um, uh, minus 2 minus t five. squared. Minus 2 t plus 14 t plus 14. Then if I take this uh, minus 2t out, here we have t plus 1. Then out of these two, I'll take 14 out. Then here we have t plus 1. Okay. Now, the equation would be minus 2t. Okay. Minus 2t plus 14. That one would be one factor. The other factor is uh, t plus 1. Now, instead of this t, instead of this t, what we can do? We can substitute um, we can substitute n plus 3. So, then minus 2 times n plus 3. Okay, if I write it in a separate sheet. See, so here minus 2 times T means uh, n plus 3, right? T means n plus 3. <coughs> Sorry, plus 14. That is the first uh, factor. The other factor is T, T means n plus 3, no? n plus 3 plus 1. That is the other factor. Okay. Then if I simplified it further, minus 2n minus 6 plus 14 times n plus 4. Wait, I got minus 2n plus 4n minus 4. How it becomes? Minus 4? Minus 2 times 6? That is minus 6. No? Minus 2 times 3? So then here we have, uh, uh, I'll get uh, minus 2 n plus 8. No, I try to take out the minus 2. Why? Ah, okay. You took out minus 2. Oh, yeah. Okay, then that's fine. If you take this minus 2 out, then you will receive n minus 4 here. Yeah, n plus n. 4. Okay, and then n plus 4. Minus yeah, that's 2. Right. Okay, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. Then you have uh, the B. I didn't do that. Ah, that one it's worked. Okay. Now, uh, solving quadratic equations by factorizing. Okay. So, this one also you know, right? Nothing to explain. What do you think? So, first, what do you... So, first, if we, um, if we like, uh, if we use this quadratic equations, uh, if we use this factory method to solve these equations, what we normally do, for example, let's assume we have that equation as 3x squared minus 2x minus 5 is equals to 0. Then we consider the left-hand side. So left-hand side will uh, do the factorization. If we factorize this part, then you will receive 3x minus 5 times x plus 1. Then the right side, it has equals to 0. Is it clear? Is it clear? Yes. Do I, do I wanted to show it? No, right? You, I think I. Uh, no. Okay. So then, what we normally do to find out the values or to find out the x values, what do we have to do? We just equalize these two brackets separately to zero. One answer is three x minus five is equals to zero. The other answer is x plus one is equals to zero. Okay, then one value is x is equals to 5 over 3. The other value is x is equals to minus 1. Okay, then what are the roots? Yeah. Roots means these x values. 
So the x values are 5 over 3 and minus 1. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what about these three? Okay, these three. I... Okay, can you try these ones? These three. Because you know already, no? First one, x squared minus 10x, 10x plus 25 is equal to 0. I have to find roots for that. First one. What are the roots? So we have to think five. 25. Okay. So 25 means, yes, x minus 5 five. squared. Yeah. 
x minus 5, five and 5. Yes, 5 and 5. Then one answer is x minus 5 is equal to 0. The other one also x minus 5 is equal to 0, which means so there we have equal roots that is x is equal to 5. The other one also x is equal to 5. Okay, then uh, the next one. Second one, what are the roots? O and minus 2. Yes. Third one. Oh, wait. Uh, minus 2. x equal 2 and x equal minus 4 over 3? Yeah, yes, correct. Here yeah, from this, I just take o out. That is x minus 2. 2 is equal to 0. Then we have x minus 2 into 3x plus 4. That is equals to zero. Then one answer is x is equals to plus two. The other answer is x is equals to minus four over three. Okay, it's clear, right? These are the two factors yeah. which I received. Okay, then that part also correct now. Uh, then we have uh, next uh, topic uh, that is apply quadratic equations. How we gonna apply the quadratic equations? Then they have a given kind of an scenario. Dog jumping is an uh, exciting dog event in which dogs compete for the longest jumping distance from a duck into a body of water. The path of a Jack Russell, uh, a terrier on a, a particular jump can be approximated by this given uh, quadratic equation, where h is the height above the surface of the water and d is the horizontal distance the dog uh, travels from the base of the dog both in feet all measurements are taken from the base of the dog's tail that is determine the horizontal distance of the jump now how are we going to find out the solution we need to consider this entire given quadratic equation and then what do we have to do we just want to do find the roots Roots means find the solutions for this one, where this entire uh, equation is equal to zero. So we just mark it as equal to zero, and then we try to uh, we try to factorize this one. Before fa before we are factorizing this one, we need to uh, okay. What we normally do is we just factorize this one, and then equal that entire expression to zero and find out the values for d. Is it clear? Okay, here 1 over 10 is common. No? So because of that, we just take 1 over 10 as a common term uh, out. Then uh, minus 1 over 10 will be out. Then here we have 3d squared minus 11d minus 20 is equals to 0. Is it clear how this 2 becomes 20? Uh, you got minus 20 times yeah. minus 1 over 10. Yes, yes, yes. Because we took one of minus one over take one over ten out. Because of that, here it has uh, now two becomes minus twenty, right? It's clear, right? Yeah. Okay. Then then we got the solutions as d is equals to five and d is equals to minus four over three. But minus four over three is a solution. The is it a solution? D means a distance. Oh. Then distance can be uh, can distance be a negative value or a positive value? Positive. Yes. yes, it should be a positive value because of that. What's happening? Because of that, it's equals to only the final value would be D is equals to 5. Okay? 
we can we can uh, we can neglect minus 4 over 3 say a distance cannot be negative because of that the only root we have is d is equals to 5 is it clear yeah okay that is done can you do this question okay we have only ah oh, from that we are done with that chapter oh yay okay this one last question
So here, what do you, what do we need to do? Uh, we just wanted to find uh, D one by zero. We just wanted to factorize, right? Oh. So otherwise, how are we going to find out a, a, a pool of water, the path of the slider after leaving the water of leaving the lower end of the slide can be approximated by the quadratic function hd is equal to this one where h is the height above the surface of the pool and d is the horizontal distance horizontal distance the slider travels from the lower end of the slider both in feet what is the horizontal distance the slider travels uh, before dropping into the pool after leaving the lower end of the slide which means? Oh. So here D means what actually? D is the horizontal distance. The D means actually the horizontal distance the slider travels, right? Yes. Uh, then what do you need to do? You just wanted to factorize. I did. Uh, okay. You did, right? Yeah. Okay. I got minus 1 over 6. Minus 1 D over plus. 6. Okay. So here minus 1 over 6 d squared minus 1 over 6 d plus 2. No? If I do what I if I do it manually, then what I normally do is I'll I just take 1 over minus 1 over 6 out. Then here we have d squared plus d minus, then here we have 12. So this one we can factorize it as. How? Minus 1 over 6 d squared plus 4d minus 3d minus 12. Then if I take this d out, here we have d plus 4. If I take this minus 3 out, here we have d plus 4. Then that means at last, uh, Outside here, outside the bracket, we have minus 1 over 6 as well. That means minus 1 over 6, the other bracket is d plus 4, the other one is d minus 3. Now, what's the answer? What are the answers? We have two answers. D and minus 4. D is equal yeah. to, ah, okay. So what is the correct one? Three. Yes, three. Because D cannot be a positive value. No? Because of that, it would be three. Okay. Uh, that is clear. Then you can uh, do the entire uh, questions. Check your understandings as well. This entire question. Then we can have the 4.3 as well. Solving quadratic equations by completing the squares. Are you this one also easy? Shall I explain this one and wind up? Do you know how to? Oh, uh, we have done already, right? How to make a quadratic equation a complete square? Can? Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, okay. It's because we did it uh, when we were doing what? Uh, we just. Uh, oh, we just convert the standardized <coughs> standardized form at a standardized form equation to a vertex form equation. Can you remember that one? Yeah. So there, are, what we did was we just convert this uh, standard form equation into a vertex form equation by using this complete square method. Okay. Yeah. Uh, now the same thing happens here. So they have taken, uh, so once we convert this, uh, once we convert the standard form one into a vertex form one, then what we normally do, we just equalize that into zero. We just equalize that one into zero. Okay. Yeah. So then X minus one squared minus 49 is equals to zero. Then X minus one squared is equals to 49 uh, will uh, be on right side. Then it would be 49. 
If I take the square root of both sides there, we have x minus 1 is equals to plus or minus 7. So x is equals to 1 plus or minus 7. It's clear, right? You know how to convert yeah. this, uh, this format into a, uh, I mean, the standard form quadratic equation into a, uh, what we call the vertex form equation, right? Yes. Okay, that's what we need to do here. Okay, so which means you can do all these ones, no? Example one and example two and example three and also example four, applying the completing the squares. Okay, that one also you can do. Then you can complete this uh, checkpoint as well, checkpoint exams, practice exercise as well. Okay, so it's it's okay, right? You can do those ones yeah. alone, okay? Then uh, the then we have another thing called 4.4 that is quadratic formula. Investigate the quadratic formula. Oh, uh -huh. okay. This one also we have already done. So I'll I'll since these ones are very easy, I'll go quickly. So can you remember that I uh, initiate or I explain the word called discriminant? Discriminant was yeah. delta x and the delta x was calculated by b squared minus 4ac. Can you remember that yeah. one? Uh, that yes. one, they are, they, are, uh, they are talking that part here because for, uh, for the previous section, they were explaining that uh, real root part by using the graph. No? Now only they are solving that, uh, they are checking with whether that the equation has two real roots or uh, equal one root or there's no any real root kela by the uh, what we call the um, uh, algebraic method. So here as you already know we have that equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to zero. You know right how to find out the value x by using this equation minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus have you done this one? Yeah, yeah, I did little. Ah, uh, okay. So we can find out the x value from uh, minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac divided by 2n. Discriminant means the value inside the square root part. Okay. Oh. So that is what we call without the square root mark b squared minus 4ac is the discriminant. Then, for example, so let's assume that they have given us 3x squared plus 5x minus 2 is equals to 0. So first we need to find out what is A, what is B, and what is C. So A is 3, B is 5, C is minus 2. Is it clear? Once yeah. we initiate these values, once we found these values, then we can find out the x values. How? We can substitute these values to this given expression. So minus b plus or minus square root b squared. That is 5 squared minus 4 times a would be 3, c would be minus 2. And then we are getting two answers. One is for the plus, the other one is for the minus. Is it clear? Yes. I am doing these ones fast because I feel like you know and you can manage these ones. So x would be 1 over third and the other value, other x would be minus 2. Those are the two roots of this equation or two solutions of this equation. If you draw yeah. this curve, then the curve would go like this. Now, since we have two distinct intersection points, x intercepts, so what we can uh, conclude, this one has two distinct real roots, right? Yeah. Uh, then to conclude that one earlier, what we can do, we can calculate this b squared minus 4ac, okay, this one, and we can um, find whether it's greater than O equal to 0, whether it's greater than 0. If it's greater than 0 only, we can say that this entire equation has two real roots. If it's equal okay. to 0, if it's, if uh, this part b squared minus 4ac is equals to 0 then we can say it has one real root if it's negative value which means less than 0 then we can say 
this entire road, uh, this entire equation doesn't have any real roads. Is it clear? Yeah. That's what they are explaining here. See, the discriminant means b squared minus 4ac. Then if the b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, there are two distinct real roots. If this b squared minus 4ac is equals to 0, is one distinct real root. So actually, one real root is there or two equal real roots. One distinct real root or else two equal real roots. And then the discriminant is less than zero. Now, b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. Now, then it doesn't have any real root. Those are the three criteria, so the three situations. Is okay. it clear? Yes. Okay. So these ones you can do by yourself, right? Do I need to explain? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, so your turn is there. And then the example two. Example three. Yeah, example four also the same thing happens. So first, you have to generate the equation and then you have to find out the roots. Okay, that one was okay. So you can do this, um, I mean, uh, you can do this exercise as well. 4.4. 4. Okay. Oh. So I think now you have, uh, chapter four is completed. Chapter four, the practice test. Yeah. That's all about the Cumulative review also you can do. That's all about uh, unit two test. Yeah. This entire one. Up until, so we have completed that lesson as well. Unit three is functions and the equations. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's okay. We have done the fourth one. We have completed the fourth lesson. So you can complete the entire fourth lesson. Go through with each and every example. Okay, try those ones. If you are not doing those ones, just so they have given the for the examples now, they have given already provided the, the what we call already provided the uh, yes. solutions now. So read yeah. those stuffs as well because so if you read those ones only, you can identify what are the things you should mention or you should write while you're answering the question at the exam also. So then you will not miss any point. That's why then just go through each and every example and then just go through with each and every example and then do only the exercises. Okay, you can come. I didn't do, yeah. I, I don't do one or two exercise in the chapter three. Chapter three, why? Uh, these ones, uh, it's not... Uh, clear, right? It was not clear. Yeah. Okay. What are those questions? No, but I'll do it. Like I didn't do the exercise three point two and three. Three point two. What's the page? Yeah. Can you do? You have the page number. You see. I don't have the page. page. Okay. Three point two. I think it would be if it's three point two. Somewhere around here. Well, I can do it. Sorry? Yeah, I can do it. Okay. I can do it. Mm -hmm. 3.2, right? Okay, 3.1. Here we have 3.2. 3.2. Mm -hmm. Three point two is here. Okay, investigating quadratic functions in standard form. Okay, what are the questions you have to do? Uh, to go down. Mm. Yeah, so you do this. Uh -huh. The whole thing. So you know how to do these ones, right? Do you want I me to? So. 
do you want me to explain so you have to start with this exercise and complete okay that's fine take your time and do that's fine you want me to explain one or two questions yeah how do you know what's quadratic quadratic yeah ah uh, i told you no if an equation is x square yes ah uh, yes ah uh, so it... i told you i explained you with the word called degree quadratic means so degree two ah uh, yes quadratic means what any polynomial any polynomial any polynomial if the degree is equals to two any polynomial if the degree is equals to two first one is an quadratic equation okay second one is it that one is not no not. why that one is a line yeah what about the third one is it a uh, uh, no why it's like 4x cube yeah which means degree is 3 not 2 what about the fourth one is x square like 6x square so yeah 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 that's so so first you need to yeah. explain first first thing is you need to explain what is the quadratic equation that means any polynomial which the degree is equals to 2 and then you can define a and d only uh the quadratic equations the other two b would be a linear equation because the degree is equals to 1 and for the third one it's a cubic equation degree is equals to 3 is it clear yes okay uh do you want me to explain the rest these ones you mm. can do i think i think uh, you didn't try it out no? did you try no. out no. ah okay no. then first you just try it out i'll uh, i'll mark whatever you have sent to me so that we can discuss those ones um, in another day no so i'll mark those ones yeah you can complete that means you have to complete the chapter 3 as well as chapter 4 as well if you have time just complete those two chapters then we can start with the chapter 5 okay oh. okay then uh, yeah we can wrap it up Anyway, now it's ten thirty now. So thank you so yeah. much for joining. Then see you on tomorrow at the same time. Okay. okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. How I gonna end this one?